There are growing calls for a no-fly zone to prevent Vladimir Putin and Russia from continuing to reign terror on Ukraine. But while that might seem like a strategy that could make sense to protect Ukrainian civilians, fact of the matter is it escalates the war further and could lead to more innocent people and innocent lives being lost. Now, one of the individuals calling for a no-fly zone is Vladimir Zelensky, the leader of Ukraine. In fact, President Joe Biden has said that he will not support a no-fly zone. And Zelensky was asked about Biden's views on that during a recent interview with CNN. Let's hear what Zelensky had to say. The United States has said that it will not enforce a no-fly zone over this country, and it won't put boots on the ground. But do you think it is now time for President Biden and other Western countries to reconsider that and to help you, not just with military aid, but with, but with manpower? I've already turned to some foreign leaders with this request. I believe that leaders must support democratic states of the world who are keen to defend such principles. The powerful issue of closing the airspace helps us tremendously. This does not mean dragging NATO into this war. We spoke many times with President Biden, and I'm thankful for him for these opportunities and support, but they also did not hear me. I've been telling them that Ukraine will fight hardest of all. You will see, but us alone against Russia, you would not be able to do it. So Zelensky is clear on that. There have been other officials from Ukraine who have also aggressively called for a no-fly zone. But here in the United States, there are some lawmakers who are asking for the same, particularly Republican lawmakers, including GOP Senator Roger Wicker, who called for a no-fly zone in a recent interview with Huffington Post. Clearly, he says, in the absence of a UN resolution, which would which Russia would veto, a strong coalition of like-minded nations should step in and seriously consider this no-fly zone. In the House, Republican Representative Adam Kinzinger asked for a similar strategy. The fate of Ukraine is being decided tonight, but also the fate of the West. Declare a no-fly zone over Ukraine at the invitation of our sovereign of their sovereign government. Disrupt Russia's air ops to give the heroic Ukrainians a fair fight. It's now or later. And there are other examples that I want to share with you in just a moment. In fact, why don't I go to it now? Because this video is powerful. And despite how powerful it is, I still think it's a bad idea to implement a no-fly zone. I'll explain why in just a minute. But let's go to this next video, which features a Ukrainian activist by the name of Daria Kalunik, who is furious with Boris Johnson for also refusing to support a no-fly zone. Let's watch. Imagine crossing the border with a baby. Or with two children. I'm so glad that Samantha Power is coming here to the border from the Polish side. Let her come to the border from the Ukrainian side and see that. Britain guaranteed our security under Budapest Memorandum. So you're coming to Poland. You're not coming to Kiev, Prime Minister. You're not coming to Lviv. Because you're afraid. Because NATO is not willing to defend. Because NATO is afraid of the World War III, but it is already started. And these are Ukrainian children who are there taking the hit. You're talking about more sanctions, Prime Minister, but Roman Abramovich is not sanctioned. He's in London. His children are not in the bombardments. His children are there in London. Putin's children are in Netherlands, in Germany, in mansions. Where are all these mansions seized? I don't see that. So the US has stayed committed to refusing to implement a no-fly zone. We'll go to Jen Psaki's statement on it in just a second. But Cenk, do you watch those videos and feel at all persuaded that we should go in that direction? No, not 1%. So not because it's not heartbreaking, It's she's absolutely right, it's totally heartbreaking. Like I said earlier in the show, I watch a kid get killed and the doctors are crying and you and you think that maybe the kid's gonna make it, they bring it to the hospital, you see it in the video and then she doesn't make it. And and so if you're anywhere near a decent person, you wanna help. But a no-fly zone doesn't help Ukraine or anyone else. Now it seems like it helps Ukraine, of course. It looks like, hey, you're gonna protect your skies and then they could maybe they could win on the ground, right? But the minute you put US jets, British jets, etc. in the sky over Ukraine, and the Russian jets are there at the same time, they're gonna fire on each other. Right. And the minute they fire on each other, we are in a war with Russia. 
and the US and, and uh, Russia have 90% of the nukes in the world. We could destroy all of humanity. How does that help Ukraine? So guys, as frustrating as it is, you have to be disciplined here. And it's not like we're not doing anything. If we were doing nothing, I'd be furious. In fact, in the first couple of days, it, it seemed like our sanctions were not nearly tough enough, and we were furious on this show. And we called Biden weak and we said, what's the matter with you? He didn't even, even sanction Putin in the beginning. When they actually invaded Ukraine, I thought that was outrageous. But now he has done all of the sanctions that you could do except for oil. And they could even do that, and that's arguable. But as things stand now, I mean, it looks like they've broken the Russian economy's back in just in five days. And Putin is frazzled, he's yelling at people on TV, it's unprecedented. Their uh, troops are bogged down. So here we, we seem to be doing relatively okay. And by the way, it could change at any moment, we know that. And Kiev could be an absolute slaughterhouse. They've got a 40 mile convoy of artillery and tanks headed there now. We understand all of that and the pressure will build. But getting everyone killed, including the people in Ukraine, isn't going to help. Right, and of course, Putin has already threatened using you know nuclear capability in response to all of this, which is terrifying as is. It's unclear whether he's bluffing or not, but you have the United States and its Western allies attempting to de-escalate any talk of potential nuclear war, and that's the responsible thing to do. Also, I think Jen Psaki did a decent job in responding to questions in regard to why the United States does not want to implement this no fly zone. Remember guys, no fly zone is not like the Iron Dome where it's just shooting down missiles and you know those types of attacks. It means that we would shoot down Russian planes, you know, we would be in direct military conflict with Russia. It is a severe escalation in this war. So that's why it's a bad idea. That's why I think that it would actually lead to more people, including innocent Ukrainian civilians losing their lives. And so let's go to White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki and how she answered a question about this. Terry, is there any way in which the US would support a no-fly zone over Ukraine? Well, here's what's important for everybody to know about a no-fly zone. What that would require is implementation by the US military. It would essentially mean the US military would be shooting down planes, Russian planes. That is definitely escalatory. That would potentially put us into a place where we're in a, a military conflict with Russia. That is not something the president wants to do. So that's a no on that. that those are all the reasons why that's not a good idea. Look and Jenk, there are some Republican lawmakers who agree with that take as well, including little Marco. Marco Rubio weighs in on this. He has the right take and says, you know, if they were to implement a no-fly zone, that would mean World War III. And I think he's right about that. So now, this is an interesting topsy-turvy world situation here because, um, you know, we warned you about the new. Uh, Republicans that are friendly to the Democrats, right? Uh, before, no Republicans were friendly to Democrats, but now you've got Liz Cheney, Adam Kinzinger. But we said, beware of uh, Republicans bearing gifts. So they're all neocons. And so, in some ways, they're the most sane, but in other ways, they're the most dangerous of the Republicans. They love war, they love to start any war. And there's Kinzinger all of a sudden saying, oh, no fly zone, no, like, like it's no big deal. Now, let's go ahead right into World War III. Uh, no, I, I'm not interested in those neoconservatives. We warned you about them as Pelosi's hugging them nonstop. And you know, a lot of the Democrats are warmongers too. So thank God that Biden hasn't gone further uh, and listened to these idiots. Now, the other part of it is now Trump's a mess, right? So you can't, he has no discernible ideology. Uh, so at one point he'll say, "Oh, I'll be tougher on Russia," and then he'll say, "Well, the Russians, why don't they just take Ukraine?" Or they're so smart for attacking and invading Ukraine. By the way, what part of Putin looks smart right now? Right. Trump's been saying for a whole week about how smart Putin is. He said it during CPAC, over which was just like weekend. Yeah, two days ago. Yeah. Right. And Putin is now bogged down in Ukraine. He's cut off financially from the rest of the world. He looks like a mess. What? Part, and he's threatening nuclear war. What part of that is smart, you dumbass? Okay, so but that's Trump. But on the other hand, he started a movement in the right wing, or he took advantage of a movement that was already there, but publicized it and amplified it that is against endless wars. That's a great development. So now we have some significant portion of the right wing, and Marco Rubio is a warmonger, he's a neocon too. 
But he put his finger to the wind and he was like, "Oh, most Republican voters don't want war. They agree with what they think Trump is saying. Right. So he's headed in that direction. Good. I'm happy to meet the right wing on the no war stance. And guys, we didn't want things to escalate before the war and we criticized Biden for being too aggressive against Russia and in regards to NATO, etc. But by the way, as we said afterwards, it looks like based on the evidence we got afterwards, Putin was gonna invade no matter what. Right. So it turns out Biden was right. Yeah. And and here he is being restrained. He is not going towards the neocons. And that's definitely a good thing. And and I wanna I wanna just add some more weight to what you're saying in regard to how NATO actually wasn't the issue. Look, uh, that was I took Russia's uh, security uh, concern seriously. It's not about NATO. They would have done this whether or not Ukraine was really going to join NATO. Remember, a few days before the Russian invasion, Zelensky made it clear that he was going to drop any intention of even joining NATO, and they did the invasion anyway. And prior to the invasion, Putin gave this speech where he made it abundantly clear that this is about expanding the Russian Empire. That's yeah. what this is about. It's about you know blood and soil. That he gave a blood and soil speech. There's no question about that. And so uh, you gotta call it like it is. We were wrong in our calculation, but we gotta be honest with you guys and let you know. No, no, I don't. To be no, Anna, mm -hmm. I, I don't accept that we were wrong. We should not. I don't think we should be expanding NATO to Ukraine. I didn't think we need to go down that road. I didn't think we needed to lose the moral high ground and antagonize, etc. Sure. But what I what, what what we're pointing out now is based on the evidence we got afterwards. Yeah. It turns out it didn't matter. Even if the, if it was the wrong thing to do, it doesn't matter if we did the right thing, Putin would have invaded anyway. So that all his preparations were in that direction, etc. So we were I, I don't think we were wrong at all to say hey, America should do as much as possible to de-escalate. As it turns out, it wouldn't have made a difference. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.